Hello everyone, and welcome back to the Fluctus Channel. For centuries, the primary method by which a ship or boat could be steered through the water was through the use of a rudder. This is essentially a flat vertical plane of varying size placed at the stern of the ship. When moved from side to side during forward or reverse motion, the rudder made it possible to steer the vessel. The more the rudder is moved, the greater the force placed on it, the harder the vessel will turn. Despite being used for so long, the rudder has serious limitations, especially when it comes to larger ships. For instance, even massive ships like aircraft carriers can maneuver just fine when moving quickly. Rudders also have limitations in terms of angle, which can reduce the turning radius. Considering all this, the ABB group devised a solution, the azimuth thruster system. Azimuth thrusters are a configuration of marine propellers placed in pods. As they're known, these azipods can be rotated at any horizontal angle. Since the pods facilitate thrust and alter direction, they eliminate the need for a rudder altogether. Moreover, azimuth thrusters utilize electric power, which means they can attach directly to the motor without requiring shafts or drivetrains. These features drastically improve maneuverability, especially when two azipods are manipulated in different directions. Another advantage of the azipods is that they can generate an amazing amount of thrust. This has come in extremely handy for special ships operating in the Arctic, which can actually drive stern first to move through thick ice sheets without an escort. Lastly, it improves the maneuverability and profitability of some of the largest vessels on the ocean, cruise ships. ABB's Azipod propulsion units come in multiple sizes, depending on the vessel upon which they will be installed. However, as you can see here, these pods can easily reach up to 30 feet in length, with propellers of the same diameter or more. During manufacturing, the casing of the pod is constructed first, and then a stator, the non-moving part of a rotary system, is inserted into it. Simultaneously, the actual propulsion unit, shaft line, and other bearing assemblies are constructed. This forms the rotor that is then inserted into the casing. After testing, the pod is transported to its awaiting vessel. Once attached, the propellers can be installed and the system is ready for operation. Although azimuth thrusters help reduce the need for icebreaker escorts, they are also extremely popular for use on icebreaker vessels themselves. Not only do they reduce energy use on long Arctic missions, but they provide an increased turning radius that allows vessels like this to hit the ice at multiple angles of attack.
Ultimately, this reduces the potential for wear and tear on the ship's reinforced hull, while allowing for increased icebreaking efficiency. That said, many icebreakers will employ more traditional modes of propulsion in order to maximize their performance. Indeed, ice drifts pose a huge threat to vessels of all sizes, and power, not maneuverability, is often the most important factor at play. Most of the icebreakers in the United States fleet belong to the Coast Guard. And of all the ships in the fleet, one of the most technologically advanced is the USGC Healy. This unique icebreaker is actually the Coast Guard's largest vessel at 420 feet long and 82 feet wide. Though it features a more traditional propulsion system, it does utilize a combination of diesel and electric power to maximize efficiency, reduce costs, and ensure the ship can stay on mission for as long as possible. In the Healy's case, that mission is largely scientific. In fact, more than a third of the 136 crew is made up of researchers. Still, while it boasts a total of five laboratories, the ship also has a special reinforced hull and uniquely shaped bow to help it ram through ice as thick as 4.5 feet. When moving in reverse, the ship can conquer ice up to 10 feet thick. As if that weren't impressive enough, the Healy also features a special bow thruster system to aid in navigation. And since anything can happen in the remote regions of the Arctic, it has two Eurocopter HH-65 Dolphin helicopters on board as well as multiple smaller auxiliary and science vessels. As part of the United States Coast Guard, the Healy and other icebreakers are sometimes called upon to perform rescue operations. For instance, back in July of 2014, a Canadian man, piloting a 36-foot sailboat from Vancouver to eastern Canada, became stuck in the thick ice. The route, known as the Northwest Passage, is one of the most treacherous shipping lanes in the world. What's more, the man ended up stranded around 40 miles northeast of Barrow, Alaska. This is the northernmost settlement in the United States and lacks the equipment and infrastructure to pull off such a remote rescue mission. Fortunately, the Healy was able to locate the man and tow his boat back to civilization using the heavy-duty crane located at its stern. The year after the Healy performed this impressive rescue, it also became the first unaccompanied United States service vessel to reach the North Pole. Despite being specifically designed for the role of moving through heavy ice, Coast Guard icebreaker vessels are susceptible to damage. In this case, the USCG cutter Polar Star suffered a shaft seal leak while in the seas 18 miles north of McMurdo Station, Antarctica. Such an occurrence could have proved cataclysmic 
had the crew members not been able to use a hand pump air ram to free the clog in the shaft seal drain pipe. Soon after, they were able to tighten the bolts around the seal so the ship could get underway once again. The 400-foot-long vessel had been on a mission to break up the ice near McMurdo Station and provide escort services to a refuel and resupply ship. The station is located around 2,000 miles south of New Zealand in the Ross Archipelago. Arctic and Antarctic expeditions of this kind are not only frequent, but extremely necessary. Here, you can see footage from the Polar Star's last major escort mission, which included 159 crew members helping to guide three vessels through thick polar ice. The mission also included a five-day inspection of foreign research stations, equipment, and other installations. Despite its great size, the Polar Star moves at a lumbering pace whenever it is actively breaking the ice. The ship's crew all have a variety of duties, with around 18 officers directing operations aboard the vessel. Many of the men and women on board are part of various research teams looking to collect data and other important information. However, these crews are also responsible for maintaining the ship inside and out. Upon encountering trouble, it's not uncommon for the ship's captain to send divers into the freezing water to investigate. Efficiency and reliability are two of the most important factors to consider when constructing a ship. And though the rudder has served vessels of all sizes for thousands of years, solutions like the azimuth thruster are an excellent way to increase maneuverability while simultaneously making the ships more energy efficient. Even so, there are some areas of the world that remain so hazardous that even well-equipped vessels like the Polar Star can end up in perilous situations when things go wrong. Fortunately, a good crew and a quick-thinking captain will always have the power to save lives. That's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it.
Make sure to subscribe to this channel so you don't miss any of our new content. See you next time.